Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today's video is a bit of a follow up to the coverage we did a couple of weeks ago on the first Windows on ARM devices. In that video, which you should definitely check out, we benchmarked the Snapdragon 835 running Windows in both emulated x86 apps and native UWP apps, comparing it to a range of other processors. In this video, we'll be revisiting some of those benchmarks, but we'll be mostly looking more closely at the first Snapdragon 835 device running Windows, the HP NVX2. Having now used this tablet for a couple of weeks, there's a lot of things HP did well to make this a hardware experience to rival the Surface. And then on the other hand, they probably were a bit let down by the performance of x86 emulation on ARM processors. So the key piece of hardware in the NVX2 is the Snapdragon 835, however HP has packed in several other decent components. The display is a 12.3 inch 1920x1200 IPS LCD, there's a decent 41.6 watt hour battery, and you'll get either 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, or 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, depending on the configuration and region. In the United States, the 4GB model is what you'll get, while here in Australia, we have the 8 gig variant. Unlike with basically every Windows tablet except the Surface, both the keyboard cover and stylus are included in the box for no additional charge. For some reason, Microsoft is still able to charge nearly $200 extra for these accessories, which just blows my mind. HP's Windows on ARM device is the most premium of the devices announced so far. While ASUS and Lenovo targeted more mid-range offerings, the NVX2 screams in at the top with a full metal construction and an eye-watering $1,000 price tag. The pricing of this tablet will be examined fully a bit later on, so for now let's discuss the design and construction of this tablet. According to Qualcomm, both HP and Lenovo opted to use several elements of Qualcomm's Windows on ARM reference design for their devices. Despite this, the final build of the NVX2 is fantastic. It looks excellent with metal on all sides and Gorilla Glass protecting the display, and the near seamless construction gives it that premium touch you'd expect from a top-end tablet. The NVX2 is also quite thin and light for a Windows device. It's just 7.7mm thick and a touch under 700 grams heavy. However, that's perhaps not as impressive when you realize the Surface Pro is 8.5mm thick and around 770 grams heavy, yet it also integrates a kickstand into the body, it features a fully fledged Intel Core processor and you get a slightly larger battery. Still, the NVX2 feels great to hold and the silver metal design is of a similar quality to HP's flagship laptops like the Spectre X360. There's enough bezel around the display to make the tablet usable in a handheld fashion without absolutely overwhelming the screen with bezel, and the 12.3 inch display feels like a suitable size for this sort of tablet, and I like the 16-10 aspect ratio. The I.O. selection on this tablet is pretty slim at just one USB 3.1 Type-C port and a headphone jack. It's nice that it charges via USB-C, but if you want to charge it and use a peripheral at the same time, you'll have to buy a dongle. Luckily, HP does include a USB-C to A dongle for just basic peripheral use, but again, you know, if you want to actually charge and use a device, you'll have to purchase something separately. While you don't get many USB ports on this tablet, you do get both a micro SD card slot and a nano SIM slot. Thanks to the Snapdragon 835, you'll get an integrated Snapdragon X16 LTE modem in the NVX2, so you can chuck in a SIM and enjoy the internet wherever you go. I would really do wish more laptops had integrated LTE support, and with Windows on ARM, you can guarantee you're getting that feature in pretty much all the devices we'll see. The keyboard cover attaches to the NVX2 using magnets and pins, so nothing too unusual. However, as the stand is integrated into the cover rather than the tablet itself, there are a couple more steps to get the tablet set up in the cover than with the simpler Surface style kickstand design. The way the stand folds back over itself is a unique take and it does allow a wide range of angles, though for a standard laptop style angle it's not as quick and easy to use as with the Surface. Having the stand attached to the keyboard also means you can't prop up just the tablet alone. If the stand was integrated into the tablet body, the NVX2 strengths as a media consumption device could be made even stronger, you know, prop up the tablet, watch a video and enjoy outstanding battery life. But as you'll need to bring along the keyboard to use the stand, this sort of experience is a bit diminished. 
The good news is the keyboard itself is excellent. It has a great tactile clicky response, the keys are a decent size for typing, and there's not a significant amount of flex in the cover while smashing out a Word document. It's very similar to the keyboards on HP's fully fledged laptops in this regard, and the trackpad is also quite good and works well considering the limited space allocated to it. HP has also done quite well with the display. The 12.3 inch 1920x1200 LCD isn't anything special from a spec perspective, but its performance exceeded my expectations. It's capable of a high level of brightness around 500 nits, plus it features a decent contrast ratio of 14 15 to 1 and great viewing angles as well. It does have a content aware automatic brightness feature though it's not too aggressive and helps conserve energy where possible. The key aspect that impressed me is its calibration. Delta E's in the 2.4 to 2.8 range aren't quite in the realm of very accurate, however it is much better than a lot of other Windows laptops and should suffice for those that want to do some light content creation, or more likely on this sort of device, uh, view photos, and an average temperature of 7000K isn't surprising, but it's not terrible either. The main downside to the Envy X2 is undoubtedly the performance. As I mentioned in my previous coverage of the Snapdragon 835 running Windows, at best you'll get an entry level experience and at worst you'll be struggling through downright terrible performance in emulated x86 apps. The Snapdragon 835 is a low power processor with weak single core performance, so this level of performance isn't all that surprising. Looking at our benchmark results in native apps like Edge, you can expect performance above an Atom based Celeron processor from Intel, but below most of Intel's core processors from the past three to four years. You're just not going to get Core i5 performance Intel provides at a 5 to 15 watt envelope in a sub 3 watt TDP. The ability to emulate x86 apps on an ARM architecture is certainly impressive, especially at this TDP, but it's not something I'd actually recommend users do. The Celeron N3450, one of Intel's slowest x86 processors, is significantly faster in most x86 workloads, while the low power Core i7 7Y75 absolutely obliterates it. And apps just feel sluggish to use, which isn't what you'd want from a premium tablet. On top of this, you're faced with many limitations. The Snapdragon 835 can't run 64 bit x86 apps, it doesn't support x86 drivers, it doesn't support OpenGL newer than 1.1, and apps that customize Windows may not work at all. It's still very early days for x86 emulation on ARM, but for most use cases it really is a break glass in case of emergency sort of thing right now. Being limited to Windows Store UWP apps for decent enough native performance will be fine for a small handful of users that like using Edge as a browser or want to watch videos, and are fine with other basic apps and games. But if you're used to using Chrome or want to use productivity apps like Microsoft Office, Adobe Photoshop, or really anything else built for Windows desktops, emulated x86 performance isn't going to cut it especially when there are so many productivity tablets out there that use Intel processors that run x86 apps just fine. The NVX2 storage performance isn't particularly amazing either, the SATA SSD isn't going to break any speed records, and while that's fine considering the rest of the device's performance, something a bit faster would have been nice in a high-end tablet. There is good news though, while performance is limited, battery life is excellent from this tablet whether you're using native ARM apps or emulated x86 apps. The battery capacity is just 41 watt hours which is mid range for a tablet of this size, but the efficiency of the Snapdragon 835 allows it to beat almost every device in our battery tests. In our web browsing test, the NVX2 dominates most other devices with outstanding battery life, even while using Chrome. Switch to Edge, which is a more sensible option as it runs natively, and the NVX2 pulls even further ahead than other devices running Chrome natively. Either way you look at it, that's a great result for this device. Video playback is another strong area for the NVX2, though other devices are a bit more competitive here, as 1080p playback these days is a bit limited by the efficiency of the display. Still, getting 14 and a half hours of playback at quite high levels of brightness is very good. Turn down the brightness and you should be able to hit HP's stated 19 hour figure. I also tested PC Mark battery life, which again is excellent, though naturally most other devices in this chart perform a lot better in terms of the CPU performance. The Snapdragon 835 does consume less power, but it also is a fair bit slower in the process. 
Windows on ARM devices do have a few other battery related advantages. Standby battery life is excellent with very little battery drain while in sleep mode and wake times in the instant. Windows Hello performance is also much quicker than Intel laptops I've tested, which did surprise me a little bit, and you'll also get reasonably fast charging with the NVX2. However, despite great battery life, it's difficult to recommend the NVX2 for a number of reasons. The key factor in all of them is the price. A thousand US dollars is just too much to pay for this tablet. HP is effectively going head to head with similar products like the Microsoft Surface Pro and the EV, which offer full Intel Core processors and consequently provide much better performance in an equivalent form factor. I think HP made a mistake in developing a high-end tablet body to go with the entry-level performance of the Snapdragon 835. The design is beautiful and the NVX2 packs a lot of decent features, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to pair this metal design with a weak processor and charge top-end pricing for the package. Because as it stands, there really is no way I'd recommend the NVX2 over a similarly priced Surface Pro that offers five times the performance in x86 apps. Unfortunately, the Snapdragon 835 only makes sense in entry-level products priced below $500. I can't see the NVX2 getting a 50% price cut anytime soon, but that's what it'd take to be a solid buy. It's a shame too, because if HP had chucked an Intel Y-series CPU in this chassis, suddenly you'd have a really compelling product. While this first Snapdragon 835 Windows device isn't all that impressive, I don't think the entire platform is dead after one wave of releases. If Qualcomm and Microsoft work on removing some of the platform limitations, allow the use of newer Snapdragon processors, and encourage companies to make entry-level devices priced more appropriately, Intel and AMD could have a serious competitor in the sub $500 budget market. But right now, Windows on ARM really won't succeed as a high-end product. That's it for this review of the HP NVX2. Don't forget to subscribe for more reviews like this one. Consider supporting us on Patreon. Links to that in the description below, and I'll catch you next time.